They uh, traded what we think was a Queen Anne light musket, which was a military gun. Uh, it cost them a lot to buy, so it was traded for a lot. And it had a more primitive dog lock. And uh, so it didn't really work for them very well. And so they started to develop their own in house brand of gun, which is this Northwest Trade Gun. You can tell it's a Northwest Trade Gun because it's a very distinctive circuit on the side. The indigenous people learned to look for that as a sign of quality. Now, they started to develop this in about 1672. It was fully developed, as you see here, by about 1730. And they sold the last one, we think, in 1911. So it's actually one of the longest new gun types in the world. It is a smooth bore, but that was one of the reasons it was so popular, because I can fire a musket ball, or I can fire a grape shot if I'm going after fox or rabbit or fast moving animals. Or I could put in bird shot, so three guns in one. Uh, and it's also a muzzle loader, which means that everything has to go down the muzzle, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. It has a piece of flint here, so it's called a flint lock. This is, this is the lock. So it's, it's uh, got a piece of flint here, which strikes on the prison and sets off a little bit of powder in the pan there. Uh, that powder then sends a flame through the touch hole and sets off the main charge. We hope. If it doesn't, it's called a flash in the pan. Okay. A another term that comes from this gun is this is the prison, this is the pan, and because this looks like a rooster, it's called the cock. And so this position here is the half cock position. It's the safety. It won't fire. But if I have a mechanical problem with my gun, it might go off half cock. Right? And the other thing that came from this gun is this gun was manufactured in England. So the barrel was made in Manchester. The lock was made in Staffordshire, and the stock was carved by carpenters in London. So when it was assembled for shipment to the New World, it was assembled lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's where it comes from. So, like I said, this is a muzzle loader. Everything goes down the muzzle. Have you seen in the movies where they load from a powder horn? They lie. Because how are you going to know how much powder you're putting in there? Just keep pouring until it's full? I think that would be very bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a powder measure, but if the, if the indigenous people didn't have one, they would just use the palm of their hand. They would still know how much powder they're putting in. But I'm going to pour in a measured amount of gunpowder. So this is what gunpowder looks like. So that's gunpowder. Okay. So like I said, I just pour it down the barrel. And at this point, now everybody thinks that gunpowder explodes. Gunpowder